to public forum. I'm Natasha Jhabhaskar. The DMK, which is the ruling Congress' biggest ally in the walked out of the Lok Sabha today during External Affairs Minister Salman Khushid's reply to a debate on the Sri Lanka issue. During the discussion, it brought pressure again on the government rights body of the UN meets next week in Geneva. External Affairs Minister stuck to the government's stand that it would let Parliament know when it decides on how India will vote on the resolution. He said the Indian government does not want to play the role of a big brother with respect to Sri Lanka, but they do want Lankan Tamils to live a life of dignity. The Sri Lankan forces have been accused of killing thousands of minorities. Four years since the end of the war, the situation in Sri Lanka is far from a just peace. Tonight in public, comes issue and what should be India's stand. This very esteemed panelist with me, M.B. Rajesh, Member of Parliament from CPIM. Thank you very much for joining us in this program. Also with me, Dean of School of International Affairs, Jindal School of International Affairs, Sri Ram Choli. T.R. Ramachandran. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramachandran. To you, Mr. Rajesh, it is indeed a difficult moment for India and it will be a big test for India when the voting begins on the resolution next week. Yeah, as far as uh, our party is concerned, uh, we have made it clear that uh, there has been a uh, serious human rights violation. There has been a genocide against Tamil minority. Uh, so recently we have seen how uh, Balachandran, son of um, Prabhakaran, was shot dead. He was shot point blank. Genocide has taken place and the... the uh, inquiry into this uh, human rights violation and the Sri Lankan government should fix responsibility. Second, uh, rehabilitation uh, that is uh, also important and thirdly political settlements. So uh, this is our party stance and we uh, firmly Right, and under Rule uh, 193, the Lok Sabha today discussed uh, this issue and we had this discussion. There's a lot of pres pressure from uh, different political parties on the Indian government to take Sri Lankan authorities also uh, uh, what our stand will be uh, when uh, uh, we go uh, and vote uh, on the resolution. Uh, do you think, uh, Professor Cholia, that this is indeed a decisive moment for India, though the minister has said that he will... Uh, now we are asking how far these resolutions help. Coming back to you, uh, uh, Mr. Rajesh, do you think passing the resolution will really help Tamils? Because we know what really happened uh, in the last resolution, uh, which talked about building international pressure. And the, the way international pressure was built up on Sri Lanka to answer questions on accountability and reconciliation and uh, set up to by the uh, Sri Lankan government. So we need sustained diplomatic efforts uh, to ensure that uh, the promises given by the Rajapaksha government should be uh, followed. His uh, promises will be kept. These LLRC recommendations have not been uh, implemented by him and has also been violated. So uh, sustained diplomatic action is needed to ensure that these uh, are taken by the uh, government of Sri Lanka and uh, main objective of this uh, diplomatic effort should be at uh, every step we should keep in mind that, uh, that towards being democratic because it helps us okay, at the end of the day we are opposed to fanatical and uh, extremely conservative type of regimes uh, that hurt our national security interests so we have to raise this issue as well and then because domestic politics always you know the Sinhalese majority who are finding that the space for them to of democratic freedoms is shrinking mm -hmm. under this leadership. So we must raise this larger issue as well because otherwise they will always say that India is supporting one side in the in the conflict. If we want uh, you know the mm -hmm. nation to move forward and to also account for the crimes that the only way is we must we will have to take a more multi-partisan approach 
more members of parliament from raising the issue, not just the, the, the not just the Tamil issue. Yeah, Mr. Thinking about the larger well-being of all the Sri Lankan people. Rajesh, I, I guess um, uh, Professor Cholia is making an important point here that just not focus on uh, the, the, the Tamilian issue, but the larger issue of. So even the international opinion is against Sri Lanka. It records on human rights, and uh, as we know, uh, on March 15th, uh, the resolution will be passed. Sri Lanka initiated by uh, United States. Coming back to you, uh, Mr. Ramachandran, uh, if I have to. Uh, the presidential envoy on human rights uh, said, uh, you know, after uh, uh, the resolution last year, he said unwarranted and un unfair. And Sri Lanka. So the response received uh, after the resolution uh, was uh, part in, uh, 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 in, in the UN, UNHRC. Uh, this kind of a response, and now when we are headed for another resolution, role resolutions have and how it helps a country or you know uh, the you see there's again several aspects to this you know this whole issue of Lanka devolution of past to the minorities in the north and the east of the island state it's in six seven months when there is problem that one has to counter and when the heat is felt by the southern one other states See, many of these Tamils who have come and now settled in and going back because they know if they go past the, uh, you know, if they cross and all that, this is the kind of pseudo anti imperialism that Rajapakshas have been thriving on. Mm -hmm. Effort sending out envoys all over the world, mm -hmm. especially appealing to states which have. Now the, the, the point is, first of all, India is neither anti-Western nor pro-Western. Nor pro mm -hmm. India is India, right? We have to take our interests as well as our role mm -hmm. as we should uh, uh, promote uh, harmony and coexistence in our whole region. And I think one other factor which we must bring in is Sri Lanka is now starting since the war ended, and Sri Lanka will increasingly be dependent on investments and. Uh, is where, but we know, still have a huge fiscal deficit, and that's that, that's a big challenge. Yeah. So, will the China providing the development aid uh, to uh, substitute for the lack of any interest on the part of the international community? Africa was under apartheid, and still they had some allies here and there, and they survived for a long time based on this. It's humanity. So, the, still so, it so are you saying, Professor Shoya, they have a strong ally in uh, China, and that is what? Uh, instilling fear in them uh, when, it, when you talk about international resolutions? Probably, that is one reason. The other one is they do have some other smaller states uh, which have anti-Western or have, for example, fear. But this is definitely not aggression. I mean, the way they're playing on this whole card because that's the whole logic of the Sri Lankan government. You know, human rights. You pull them up first, then you bring us out. So this competitive sovereignty and, you know, they are trying to appeal to this. We have to overcome as well as diplomatically. Uh, Mr. Rajesh, we have to overcome this intellectually as well as diplomatically. Diplomatic in engagements have always been. And also the involvement of civil society uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, um, as we were talking earlier about this issue. Uh, much freedom, uh, people uh, can't really voice their, uh, uh, you know, opinion on issues uh, which are integral to them. Uh, do you think that it also important to involve beyond assurances and also from, from uh, the side of President Rajapaksa, what are the, what are the imminent challenges for the issue of uh, uh, Tamil uh, minority? What is it that he needs to uh, do at this stage when there's uh, you know, so much of international pressure building against him? Removed on a flimsy ground which had no basis, um, they are working for justice for the past crimes as well as the contemporary ones that are being committed as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, I at the same time seeming to be interfering in their internal affairs. Say, you know, the notion of sovereignty being a shield behind which you can get away with crimes against humanity is receding. It's a role model and we must, uh, uh, you know, continue to argue mm -hmm. before the entire world emulating our federal system as well as our way of resolving these separatist problems is the
long run. So Rajapaksha doesn't have this foresight to think about uh, you know 10 years, 20 years down the line. We need that. Hopefully the UNP is going to provide it. And one uh, sad fact has been that the last uh, election, the leader of opposition was bundled over. These are like practices of um, police states. And also amending the constitution and uh, stretching his tenure. Absolutely. So Arming himself with tremendous powers. True, true. So it's, and, and we have to think about SARC also. In, in Sri Lanka, only with the help of these democratic forces that uh, we will be able to find a political solution. So uh, the, the, only with the help of human rights tendency. ASEAN is doing it. You know, ASEAN finally confronted Myanmar. Right. After many years of hiding behind and saying regional, you know, responded to Myanmar, uh, which is rather, uh, uh, in fact, when, when uh, Aung San Suu Kyi was here, uh, she said that uh, we could have actually... A lot less cause. than we should have. Exactly. And when it was bad. And the explanation we give is that we might be the world's largest... ...reach democracy outside, but uh, 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 we're not interfering, but the question is that we have to make no, our stand clear. You know, there's a basic difference between... In ...word... For the last 60, 70, 80 years, I see no reason why you should now take a back seat when you see certain things are happening. Mm -hmm. Anyway, th that's a long issue for discussion. But are, at the end of the day, even in Sri Lanka, I fight the LTT on behalf of Sri Lanka, and he chose to fire a gun from the show on the. And ultimately, we know how he became terribly anti when the IPKF could only do something up to a point and no more. Right. And we have a price for it. Right. I think we need to be certainly proactive on certain issues. And India has not interfered in the certain aspects of these things should be told point blank to your this is one, issue, one issue which concerns us as well. So Proactive than just yes. reactive. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, in this program, Mr. Ramachandran, yeah. Professor Cholly, and Mr. Rajesh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar.